Hello everyone and welcome to this OpenFlow demo. My name is Sebastian, I'm a Cloud Data Engineer at Adesso, which is a Snowflake Elite Partner and OpenFlow Launch Partner. We bring many years of project experience in implementing modern data and AI platforms. With our expertise in Snowflake OpenFlow, we enable modern automated data processes, simple, scalable and future-proof. Today in this demo, my goal is to show you how to ingest data from a MySQL table, which contains customer data. I will then transform and enrich the data with technical column, stream it into Snowflake and make it ready for analytics. All that while using a visual low-code interface. So what exactly is Snowflake OpenFlow? OpenFlow is a new Snowflake native solution that lets you build data pipelines using a visual drag and drop interface powered by Apache Nephi. There are two deployment models. First, the current bring your own cloud model where OpenFlow runs in your own cloud environment such as AWS. Second, the Snowpack Container Service deployment, which will allow you to run OpenFlow fully inside Snowflake. In this demo, we focus on the bring your own cloud model on AWS, which is already available and fully supported. So let's take a quick look at the high level architecture. On the left side, we have Snowflake's control plane and image registry. On the right, we have our customer AWS account where OpenFlow is actually deployed. Snowflake provides a cloud formation template that spins up an elastic Kubernetes service and networking resources. Inside the private subnet, the OpenFlow agent connects to the runtime and handles pipeline execution securely. The setup ensures full control, security and scalability while staying fully managed from Snowflake. Now, after the short architectural insight, I want to start with the demo. So let's switch over to Snowside. As you can see, OpenFlow is already implemented in Snowside under the data section. If you click on that, you can see the site with some general information about OpenFlow, such as key features and benefits, and you can also get access to the Snowflake documentation. To launch OpenFlow, we click on the top right. This takes us to the overview page, where we can see our active deployments on AWS and active runtimes. One of the key advantages of OpenFlow is the set of ready-to-use connectors that allow us to quickly integrate various data sources and destinations like Post Tree SQL, Kafka streaming events, or even SharePoint content for unstructured data, and without the necessary to writing any custom code. This makes building data pipelines much faster and easier. So now let's jump into my runtime I already created for this demo and build a pipeline step by step. We are now in the canvas. In the top bar, we have various icons for processors, input and output port, and processor groups, because we have the op option of combining several processors into processor groups. In this way, for example, higher level control options can be realized. And you can also import existing flows from registry. Before we start, I want to take a moment to highlight one important feature in OpenFlow parameterization. An open flow parameters play an important role in making our flows reusable and envi environment independent. When I click on my user on the right side, I have various setting options. Under parameter context, I have already created one for MySQL and one for Snowflake. These contexts store connection details and configurable values, so we don't have to hard code anything in the processors themselves. This makes it easy to manage credentials and settings and change them without touching the flow logic. Okay, let's move back to the canvas. To start with the pipeline, I will, uh, I will pair drag and drop a new processor. As you can see, we got a list for various processor types. First, I will use the query database table processor. So I will search for it and add it to the canvas. This connects to our MySQL source and fetches rows from our churn modeling table. In the configuration, I have to select a database connection pooling service. The service establishes a connection to MySQL with the connection URL, username, and password. Of course, the database type is MySQL. Then I have to enter the parameter for the table name. In this case, I keep it simple and named it MySQL 
table. As you can see, we can make even more settings, but uh, that should be enough for this case. We can also run the processor on a schedule, default set by one minute. I will set it to 10 minutes because we don't need even real-time data. This processor outputs the data as flow files in a default Afro format, which is great for schema evolution and record level processing. We will see how the, in, uh, how the output looks like in a later process. So next, I want to enrich each record with a technical timestamp of when it was inserted into Snowflake. For that, I add a new processor called update record. Also add it to the canvas and inside the processor config, I need an Afro reader because the input files are in Afro format. And also an Afro record writer for the output files. Now I will add a new property by clicking the plus to add the new column. I will name it snowflake inserted add. And the value will be um, my parameter with the current timestamp in my time zone. So that's it. The last thing I have to do is under relationships to define um, what happens if the processor fail. So it will terminate the current step. Apply to save the configuration. And now to link these together, I can draw a connection line to the step. As you can see now, the icon uh, for the first processor changed to a red square, which means the processor is valid, but currently stopped. So for the last step in this flow, we drag and drop another processor called put database record to load the data into a Snowflake table. Again, in the config on the properties, um, define the record reader for in, uh, incoming files. The database type in this case stays generic because we connect to Snowflake itself. And as a statement type, I will set a simple insert statement. So then I select for the connection pooling, the Snowflake connection service, um, similar to the MySQL one to establish a connection to Snowflake, in this case, using key pair authentication. Then of course we have to define the target schema name and the target table name. I also keep it simple and named it Snowflake Schema and Snowflake Table. It's important that you make sure the target table exists for this flow in Snowflake and that your role has insert privileges on it. I can also set um, the quote column identifiers to true to avoid upper and lower case errors. The rest can be uh, set by default and apply it. Then connect each other on success. And as you can see, the second step is also valid. Here we have a warnings. Oh, I forgot to set the relationship um, here too, to terminate. We also have to set the success relationship to terminate because it's the last processor in our flow. Okay. Now let's take a step back and look at the current flow. We query MySQL and which the records with a technical column and write them to Snowflake. To run this flow, there's a possibility to execute a complete processor group in the left navigation bar by clicking the run button. Or as in this case, I want to run it step by step by clicking, by right clicking on the processor and run once. That gives me time to monitor the data before and after execution of every processor. Perfect for data lineage. So this can take a few seconds, just wait. And yeah, if it's done, 
Now we can see in the connectors between those processors that we have a queued file in it. It is really cool that we can now look into this queue and check the data on the current status. So let's do this and list the queue. As you can see, we have one file in this queue um, with some metadata like the file si size um, or the queue duration, and this file is currently pending. So now we can download the content or just view the content. Okay, here we can see it's a customer data from the MySQL table. So every entity is an object um, with customer name, additional information about the customer like the age and also the target column um, excited. So if the customer is still a bank customer or not, um, that can be really important for, for further analytics like a customer churn prediction. So let's switch back to the canvas and run the second step. So in the background, this one should now add the technical timestamp column to the FRO file for each customer entity. This one can be extremely helpful in further operations and debugging. While the processor is executing, uh, we can look in the processor for additional information. For example, we see the count of the files currently in the processor. We also see the bytes read and write out, the count of the uh, files going out of this processor, the currently tasks running and the time it takes. So now you have um, again a cute file in it. Um, let's check if the, the, the right column was added. Yeah, so everything worked. We have our technical column here, Snowflake inserted add with the current timestamp for each customer entity. Switch back and let's run the last one. The last step um, should load the data now into the Snowflake table. While it's executing, I will switch to a Snowflake worksheet to check if the data has arrived correctly. So I will use this simple select um, all statement from the table. And yeah, I know it's not best practice in data engineering um, to select the all from the table. Um, but in this case, I make an uh, exception to, to check if we received all the data. I will order it by the row number to get a clean result. Let's run this and check the result. And as you can see, we, we received the, uh, the, um, the customer data and also the technical column was added with the current timestamp. All right, move back to OpenFlow. Now that we have loaded the row customer data into Snowflake, I want to show you um, how we can transform and aggregate this data. For example, to create new data groups for advanced analytics like the customer churn prediction. The second part of the flow uses the data we just ingested and transform it inside Snowflake using a custom SQL statement. To do that, I'm going to add a new processor with the name um, execute SQL. Add it to the canvas and connect with the first step on success. All right. This processor allows us to run any SQL command against databases, including complex queries with joins or CTEs. Let's take a look at the configuration and the properties. I can set the database connection pooling um, to the same Snowflake connection service I used earlier. So before running the main query, I can provide a pre-SQL pre statement, which creates the target table if it doesn't already exist. This is really helpful to ensure our flow runs smoothly without manual preparation. So let's define the, the right parameters for that. Again, uh, I keep it simple and named it SQL. Query for the pre query one and for the for the main query SQL query. Okay. We can also define a post query, but it's not necessary for the step. 
So under relationships, we, all, we also have to set, um, we also define what it's doing if it's failed, so terminate it and apply it. That's it. The simple block now gives us new transformed data set ready for analytics um, or even machine learning models. The rest of the flow will be the same as the first one. So for, edit, for adding the technical column, I can just copy and paste the two processors from the first flow. Uh, connect each other on success. We only have to change the target table here because we create, we want to create a new table. So in the parameters, I just named it second table. Apply it. So as you can see, our processors are valid and currently stopped. Let's run this flow too and check the results on the worksheet. In case I'm done with the whole pipeline, I will execute the processor group with all processors in it by clicking the run button on the left navigation bar. Now we can see all processors have the green play mode. So they are successful running at the same time. Okay, switch back to the worksheet the last time. And I will use again a simple select statement. I named the target table shown modeling aggregation. So if the data exists, this table should be um, should be also exist. May may check if we are on the step. Yes. So let's query this one. Yeah, and as we can see, we have now um, various data groups we created with the SQL statement. So for example, we have a count of the customer for each group, uh, mail, a credit score tier from low to high, um, group the age in age groups, and we have also our technical column here. So everything worked. So switch to OpenFlow the last time and check what did we achieve. We built a complete extraction pipeline from MySQL, enriched it with technical metadata and loaded it into Snowflake using only visual components and without writing any code. But that's not all. In the second step, I showed how to transform and aggregate the ingested data directly with Snowflake using a parameter size SQL statement. The result is a clean and structured data set ready for downstream analytics, reporting, or even machine learning, for example, for the predict, uh, prediction of customer churn. With OpenFlow, building modern ETL and streaming pipelines becomes much easier, especially for teams that want to stay close to Snowflake and don't want to manage extra tools or services. And the best part for me is everything stays in one place, so it's fully integrated, secure, and highly customizable. So thanks for watching this demo. If you want to try OpenFlow yourself, get in touch with it on, uh, on Snow site or visit the OpenFlow documentation. And of course, feel, feel free to reach out if you have any questions.